works. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so that's a little bit weird. I guess crisp was not working. Can you guys hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me now. Still nothing? Hello? Yes, there's sound. I can hear now. All right. Really bizarre. I'm not really sure what's going on with that because it's the same microphone. Hmm. All right. Well, anyway, we're here. We have sound now. So that's good. Don't have any clue what was going on there. But uh, anyway, uh, glad that you guys can hear me. This one is going to be a shorter uh, live stream than usual because at 7 p.m. I got a jump. Um, last time I was a little, little bit late when I did this and last time, uh, it was for the same reason. Uh, I am going to be on a panel a little bit later at 7 PM. There's a pitch contest, um, where, uh, for Kim Walsh Phillips, where Kim, uh, myself, uh, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. And I don't know if there's anyone else are going to be judging certain pitches. And uh, last time I did it, I came in late, which meant that I didn't hear some of the pitches, which obviously doesn't make me a very good judge. So because of that, um, uh, I want to make sure I'm on time today, right? So anyway, so I thought since I wasn't really sure what to really cover in a very short period of time, that I would just kind of keep it open up to you guys. So uh, if you've got questions, hopefully I have the answers. And so I wanted to just take this hour tonight to really kind of be there for you guys, help you in any way that I can. So with that said, feel free to start jotting your questions into the comments. And as always, let's make this a dialogue, not a monologue. I do these live streams every Tuesday from two to four and generally on Thursdays from six to eight, today from six to seven only. And uh, we're broadcasting on Facebook. And if you're watching on Facebook, uh, please emote, comment, and share. And if you share, put hashtag shared, because I want to just personally thank you. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, make sure to press thumbs up, comment, subscribe, uh, and uh, I'll appreciate you and throw you up on screen too. And if you happen to be watching on Periscope, which I think no one is, but let me take a look. Uh, yeah, zero people on Periscope watching. Um, but uh, it's really strange because like, I think that, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing that there's only two or three people watching. If you're watching on my personal page, you see three people watching. If you see, if you're in the Facebook group, you see three people watching. If you're on my personal fan page on Facebook, you see 28 people watching. So it's all over the place, right? Um, and with that said... Uh, let's see what else. Uh, it's been a busy week for me and, uh, we have a busy day tomorrow with the whole team where we're talking about the coaching program that we're going to be releasing. And so that's exciting. And, um, I head to the West coast next week or no, the following week after that. And I'll be presenting to a mastermind group called flight club by Glenn Ledwell and Alex, uh, Katoni. And uh, I, what I'm going to be sharing is like my presentation will be the top seven uh, strategies, growth hacks, tactics from CLR winners over the past 12 months that most people have never heard of that are currently crushing it. Right. So uh, what I'll do is probably show the contributor and then talk about the strategy, then show the next contributor, talk about the strategy etc. Right. I don't want anyone to think that they're my strategies because they're not. Um, but they're great strategies nonetheless. And I want to share those. So that's what's going on with me. It's also my 50th birthday on Saturday. And uh, <laughs> um, as an introvert, I had a friend that wanted to uh, have me go out with some of his friends. And I was like, yeah, not this weekend, my friend. Uh, not interested in talking to new people uh, on my birthday because as an introvert, that's just stressful and it's not really how I want to spend my time uh, on a special day. So um, 
that's what I've got some plans for the weekend. I'm really excited. I've got James Von Ellswick, the, um, the native king, so to speak. Uh, he's coming over to my house tonight. He should be here actually at eight, which is when I'm wrapping up with Kim Walsh Phillips. And so that's basically it. So let's make the most of this time. Let's get you some value. Let's make sure that we get some questions answered. There's actually two people watching on Periscope. First time ever for me. So welcome to the two of you who are watching on um, watching on Periscope. So uh, Jolene, how's it going? Good to see you. That's a long name. Jolene Rose Michaela Jane Longbow. Is that one name or are you a couple people watching together? Uh, Renan from Brazil. Good to see you, my friend. Dr. Vogelman. It was all on my end, so nothing wrong with your system. Uh, Mia, I hope you are doing well. Um, I thank you so much for talking or writing in the wherever you wrote it, because we have it, um, about your success using Scott Oldford method. Uh, it's stuff like that that really juices me and makes me feel good about the job that we're doing. Um, Jason is tuning in from Tampa. Uh, good to see you, Jason. And John Sinclair from Pennsylvania. I'm going to skip over the ones that said no sound. Okay, that's that. No audio. I can't hear you. Hey, Shelly, uh, good to see you. I know I owe you an email. Um, I wasn't muted. I just had this weird thing go on, and I had to bypass crisp is what I had to bypass. So I'm having some problem with crisp. Uh, all right. Yes. Yeah, sound. Yeah. Now spins working now. Awesome. Yes. Sound. Okay. Now sounds great. Cool. 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 Uh, hi, Rich coming from Miami beach. Hey, Lisa. Good to see you. Ellen Britt. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, sound is good now. If you want to have your you show up, you have to, uh, like as far as name uh, and you're on Facebook, you have to go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. And then when I throw your comments up, it'll actually have your name on it. Um, so there we go. Cool. We can hear you. I'm not going to put all the other ones. I thought you were going to mime today. <laughs> I am good. I hope you're well, too. Uh, I shared. So thank you, Peter, for sharing. Uh, appreciate you. Appreciate you, Rocky. Um, cool. West Serpent. That's a cool name. Uh, what have you learned from these live casts that you feel your market needs from you? All right. Huh. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. I uh, I would say that the I think we hit a bunch of people that are all at different stages. I, I, I'd like to think that there are some more pro people here, but there are also a bunch of beginners and everyone in between, which makes it a little bit more difficult to summarize like what people are really struggling with, which is why I love um live streams like this one where it's really just answering your questions because um, those questions are helpful in me getting a better sense of who you are, where you're at, and what we can do at Strategic Profits as well as Steal Our Winners to uh, help you even more than we currently are doing. And that's the goal, to consistently improve our products, consistently um, help people get even better results so that this way, um, we just ensure having customers for longer and longer periods of time. Rich, if you were an affiliate for SOW, how would you promote it? Well, me personally, I'd send it, I'd email my list. That's what I would do. Um, not necessarily suggesting if you don't have a list that you can't promote, but that's the way I would do it. Um, it all depends on what your resources are, I would say. And ideally, um, you know, I had this, we did a Q and A yesterday um, for people that are lifetime subscribers to steal our winners and also to BGS 
clients, the few that we have that came in off a fluke. And the, the question that often hasn't occurred for quite a while, but used to occur all the time was that someone would get on a Q&A call and they would say like, I've bought X, I've bought Y and I've bought Z and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. And I'm like, well, that really doesn't make a lot of sense to me because you bought all the how to without knowing what it is you want to do. And this, uh, this one gentleman, uh, his thought was, and I've heard this thought a lot of times is like, I want to be an affiliate for a lot of the internet marketers out there and sell their stuff. And generally my answer to that is, is like, that is not a bad strategy. If you are good at building a list, if you're good at generating traffic, if you're good at like you're really good at media buying or something, then those kinds of things make sense. But if you're not good at any of those things, then you really shouldn't be spending too much of your time actually um, trying to promote something that would require a lot of effort unless you're planning on going into that same space. And so this is just really getting you up to speed and helping you get situated. So I think each affiliate has to kind of decide for them what they bring to the table, what will allow them to make sales that maybe others couldn't make. And so Renan, I don't know what that would be specifically for you. So I can't really say that. And I don't know, but uh, you know, what I would say is that any place where you're talking to a group of marketers, uh, it's not a bad thing to share because I believe that this is what most marketers need, right? I was thinking about, uh, I was sitting in my backyard like two nights ago, uh, getting ready to kind of wind down the night and go to bed. And so sometimes I will smoke a little pot so that I can kind of wind down. And uh, I did. And then sometimes great ideas come to me. Sometimes horrible ideas come to me. But um, I think this was a good idea. I was thinking about this like the other night. And I was like, you know, if you think about it, every well-known coach, consultant, or guru generally got that way on the back of a new marketing tactic, a new marketing vehicle, or something related to it, right? So think Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins became famous because of infomercials, and it was the first one that went down in infomercials, right? Like I became well-known through the Internet Business Manifesto, which was really a product launch, right? Russell Brunson became well-known through click funnels, so that was a funnel. Like he was the first one really to command funnels. So if you look at every top coach, consultant, and guru, they got on there they got that way by leveraging a marketing channel or a marketing tactic early on in the progression of that channel or tactic. Guess what Steel R Winners delivers? It delivers new tactics and new channels on a frequent basis, right? So that's why I feel personally, obviously I'm biased. That's why I created the product and everything, but I feel like this is the Holy grail, right? That, Ultimately, no matter whether you're a marketer, a coach, a consultant, like knowing what the top tactics are that are currently working in the market, uh, working online is incredibly valuable. Um, and you only need to know one tactic or one strategy before the rest of the world does to blow up, right? And, uh, and that's what we deliver every month, right? Like whether it's the new push notification networks, which is in this month's Steal Our Winners in the Gohar Chowdhury uh, segment, or you know, using PPV to target all your competitors' uh, customers. That's in that same interview. Um, these things are not publicly known and are yet very valuable. So hopefully that helps, Renan. I know I didn't answer you directly, but that's because I don't have a direct answer. Hello, John Sinclair. Good to see you, my friend. Hello, Samuel. Good to see you. And uh, good old Periscope. Yeah, I mean, it was back in the heyday, right? Now the Periscope watchers are gone. <laughs> but we do have five people watching on YouTube, four people watching on my personal page, six people watching in the group, and 53 watching on my fan page. Thank you, Peter, for sharing. Uh, great to see you, Ron Williams. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you, John. Need to get Clubhouse in here, LOL. Uh, <laughs> uh, HVAC. 
contractor driving to Texas to help out and work? Any suggestions on marketing? Why? Oh, why would an HVAC contractor driving to Texas? Why would you be doing that? Is there something that happened in Texas other than the power outage a while back? Um, and work any suggestions on marketing? Uh, not sure what you're asking me there, Ray. Uh, sound so good to hear you, Rich. Uh, question, what is the setup you use to go live? Camera, live streaming software, et cetera. Um, a couple of things. I currently am using, obviously, well, not, I don't know if that's obvious. I'm currently using StreamYard. What, that's the tool I'm actually using to broadcast out. What I'm using behind StreamYard is Ecamm Live. Now, generally, before I got StreamYard, I was actually using Ecamm Live, but Ecamm Live only lets you go to one destination, and I want to go to every destination. I just put in an application to uh, be able to live stream into LinkedIn, and my fingers are crossed that LinkedIn will allow us, and if they will, StreamYard will allow this live stream to go there. So that's why I'm a bigger fan of StreamYard these days than I am Ecamm Live. But one of the cool things about Ecamm Live is, is that you can pipe in any old Canon. Well, I don't know if it's any old Canon because right now I'm trying to get a T1i working and I have been unable to get it to work properly. But I am the camera that you're looking through is a Canon 3Ti, which is a I, it, you know, it's my DSLR from about 11 or 12 years ago. And uh, it ha I bought a good lens for it. And that's what you're seeing. You're seeing that lens, which is blurring the background behind me. So I use a Canon 3Ti, which is a really old camera. You can probably pick up super cheap. And, uh, and that's what is causing this... Uh, the, the camera effects that you see. I have better cameras, newer cameras, but they don't have the same picture quality for whatever reason. So I continue to stick with this Canon 3Ti and in order for it to work the way I'm using it right now without a cam link, I need to have Ecamm Live running in the background. So everything's going through Ecamm Live and then Ecamm Live is just feeding StreamYard. And so that's how I'm using it. And uh, my mic is a Shure mic, which is the same mic that you see on most podcasts. It's what Joe Rogan uses. It's what most people use. It is a XLR mic. In other words, it has a hookup. Uh, I can't pull it out so easily, so I won't. I don't want to mess with shit right now. But it's an XLR mic, which is a bigger plug with three little prongs in it. Um, mics like that require an amp. And so the amp I'm using is a Scarlett Focusrite. And um, what I had to do, like to get the sound today was, now generally what I do is I have everything run in to my computer and then I'm using Crisp AI, Crisp.ai to uh, do noise reduction. And that was useful to me, especially when I was broadcasting to you guys from the Hamptons at the beginning of last year. Um, because I was doing it from the kitchen and Kim could be banging pots and pans. And I didn't want that to like go on to my steal our winners interviews or my live stream. So I got crisp.ai, which does a really great job of noise reduction. Like normally I'm playing with stuff like this and you don't hear that because crisp AI is taking that out tonight. Today you would hear it because I had to bypass crisp and go straight to uh, StreamYard. right? Generally, I tell StreamYard to go to Crisp, and then I go from the mic into Crisp. But for whatever reason, that wasn't working today, and that's why I bypassed it. So uh, that's the overall setup. I'm not sure if I'm leaving anything out. The lights behind me are from Amazon, uh, except those lights up there. Those lights are Hue lights. And then uh, the lights, though, below are the, where they, they create that like violet color are two lights from Amazon and they make a huge difference. Those two lights from Amazon, just to give you a sense of the difference that they cause, it was 70 bucks. Mike Phil Sane recommended it to me and check out like what these lights do.
So it just becomes a much more boring background, right? So those $70 <laughs> make this a very different kind of experience. Let me just turn them back on. So there you go. So that's that. So I hope that helps, Shakir. Good to see you. And let's move on. I've been running the exact same event model based on the SOW Scott Oldsford event. That event has done over $560,000. So thank you. I currently run the event every six weeks. I'm looking on for suggestions on what I might offer in between the live event. Okay. Well, what is it that that live event is all about? And I also, um, I did an interview a, um, let me move this just so that you guys can see me, but um, I did an interview, Mia, um, that I think is, oh, it's already out. Yeah, Simone. It's in this month's Steal Our Winners. He does a master class in between the challenges. And he does that because the challenges are so much work. And not everyone buys after the challenge, but they've bonded, right? So he capitalizes on that bonding by then doing a master class, just a three hour master class. But that's another way for people he's bonded with that are not yet ready to buy like the $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 packages, whatever the price points were. He says it in the segment. Um, and instead, offer them like a less expensive option to continue on when he promotes the masterclass. And then after he promotes the masterclass, he gets a lot of people to you know, take some of the back ends because now they've had two different experiences with this company and Simone that are really valuable. So that might be something to think about me. I don't know if you've watched uh, that segment yet in Steal Our Winners, but if you haven't, I think that would be a good one to watch. And if you want more feedback, just tell me what the challenge is about because I don't know. And then maybe we can brainstorm what you should have in between. Hey, Miboso. Hope uh, Tokyo is treating you and Miyuki well. Uh, good to see you, my friends. Uh, thanks for the birthday wishes, Rob. Uh, nice to see you live again. Thanks. I wish I knew who you were because I could thank you personally, but you have to go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook if you want me to know. Uh, Woohoo. Um, ow. Happy birthday. Yep. The big five zero. I guess it's all downhill from here, right? Um, <laughs> Thanks, Mabozo. Appreciate you. Uh, which one have you chosen as the best seven? Uh, haven't picked them all yet, but certainly, certainly the Gohart Chaudhry one would be, even though what, and it's not about the main topic of like what the headline is. There are an incredible amount of golden nuggets in that Gohart Chaudhry um, Steal Our Winners segment. So definitely that's, current this month everyone should check it out thanks bobby thanks for the birthday wishes and nice to meet you because i don't remember talking to you before and robin arrow wow are you a bodybuilder my uh ex-wife was a bodybuilder and uh that you look like you're in phenomenal shape good for you where is, where are you though because i always end up losing this uh all right, I'm looking. Hold on. Where the hell? There we go. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. Yep, half a century. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you, Evie. Uh, well, well, have an incredible birthday. Thank you, uh, Charlene. Uh, thanks, Rich. My question is, how important is personal development for a business leader and how does keeping a journal open up that side of things holistically as all things in life are connected? Well, all right. So first, and I'd say first and foremost, like with a journal, right? I, if you read the hidden obstacles of success, which is a report I wrote for founders club that is like, I think a $97 report, but we have it for free in our Facebook group, Strategic Profits. I go into a lot of detail about how I use the journal, but the journal for me is much more a thinking tool than anything else that I find that I can't think for more than like five minutes without doing something with that thinking, whether it's a whiteboard to record my thoughts, 
excuse me, or journal where I am like thinking on paper, but I can't hold that many thoughts in my head at the same time. So I need something that kind of forces that thinking. And uh, the other thing is that, yeah, I, I wouldn't normally like take questions and then really ponder them, but I do that in my journal. Like what are all the ways that strategic profits can make more money? What are all the ways that I can grow, steal our winners, right? And so one of the ways that I could grow, steal our winners that I came up with in my journal was to think of, think of new distribution channels for it. And one of the ways, so one of the outcomes of that time in my journal is that, uh, is, was to talk to Mike Filsane and see if we can create a steal our winners for Groove, which would be steal our winners plus an interview or two on Groove, like what cool things that are being done in Groove. And the and so I, I, I ran that by Mike Filsane. He loved the idea. And so starting at some point this week, we will be live with a dollar trial in... Uh, the Groove Funnel, which if it goes well, uh, Mike Filsane should be able to sell more of that than I'm able to sell Steal Our Winners because Mike's got a bigger business than I have. And so uh, that came about because of the thinking in my journal. I think that, uh, yeah, there's no doubt that personal development stuff helps an entrepreneur because the entrepreneur is the highest leverage point in any business which is why my coaching program is so different than pretty much all other coaching programs out there because I coach the entrepreneur, like how to be the best entrepreneur they can be. And there's no one else that really does that. There are, um, there's a lot of coaching programs out there. Most of them are focused on either a specific business model, a specific marketing tactic, something like that, right? So whether it's Maxwell Finn's Facebook, advertising course, whether it's Todd Brown's E5 or anything of that nature or how to sell on Amazon. These are all business models or strategies or marketing optimization. I don't really teach that. What I teach when I'm coaching is how to make the entrepreneur themselves, him or her, much more effective. And that's not about, you know, process and procedures like gazelles does and it's not even like what strategic coach does it's more intimate and it's more about the specific entrepreneur and how they can be at their very best how they can design a business to bring out the best from them and so i'd say where i overlap the most is with strategic coach but even then i'm much more interested in how do i make that entrepreneur make better decisions to be um, to get that the purpose of their business is to bring out the best of them to design it that way so that they never feel like they're disappointing their business and things like that. So a lot of that then ties back into, I guess you could say personal development, but, um, but where, but I'm not teaching personal development to entrepreneurs. I'm teaching more like, distinctions, which never comes up in self-help and, uh, and decision-making strategies and things like that. Right. And also shifts in perspective, like basically gathering the insights of 30 years in entrepreneurship and 20 years in coaching the top entrepreneurs and taking those insights, you know, and then doing my best to deliver those insights uh, in a way that they are embodied in the entrepreneur. I don't know if any of that makes sense. Uh, why serpent? But uh, um, hopefully it does. Thank you, Veronica. I will have fun celebrating. Thank you, Miyoki. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Yes, I know that. With that long name. Uh, what do I do to de-stress? Well, sometimes I smoke. Um I generally, I, when I, whenever I get stressed, what I used to do, and I can't wait until I can get back to this, um, I hop on my elliptical machine and I read, but right now my elliptical machine is all screwy. Um, the element that controls the controller of resistance is going haywire and it happened once before and I got it fixed. Um, like, I don't know, seven years ago, it's happened again. And, uh, it was supposed to be fixed already. Like I was supposed to get the, I had the service people come early January. 
they ordered the new part from the company and it was supposed to be delivered like towards the end of February. And then they got updated that it due to Corona, it's not going to be in February. It's going to be April 7th. And on April 7th, they could push back the date again. So I'm thinking about getting another elliptical machine because right now that is what I am sadly missing from my de-stress kind of routine. But that's generally what I do. Um, I like to exercise out any stress I have. And I love to do it on an elliptical where I can read and also just log in some time. Uh, happy birthday from Grace. Well, thank you, Wise Serpent. Yes, that's your legal name? Wow. That's a long legal name. Uh, Ola from Miami. Well, Ola, right back at you from Delray. Uh, wow, that's a long name. Happy 50th. Thanks, Paul. Shared to my group. Thanks, John. You're going to love my question today. Okay. Uh, happy birthday from Japan. Thank you, Je Jesper. Wow. So, Jesper, do you know Miyuki and Mimboso? Because they're both in Japan. Uh, thank you, Mimboso. 50 is great. Yeah, I'm happy to be 50. It's a little crazy and long, ain't it? Yeah, maybe you should reduce it down. It seems like also like there's a couple first names in there, like Jane, Jolene, Rose, Michaela. The only one that sounds like a last name is Longbow. Uh, Dave Newton. Hey, Dave. How's it going in the UK? Ingram Davis. How did you get all those marketers to Q&A with you, the coalition thing you did? Well, I've coached a lot of them. And then even the ones I didn't coach, a lot of them recognize the impact, I guess, I've had on the industry. Um, you know, I was one of the, I didn't invent it. I'm not suggesting I did, but I was one of the early pioneers of the free model, right? Because like when I released the Internet Business Manifesto, most people were blown away that I didn't charge for it. Because up until that point, everything that was given away, anything that was given away was not of that caliber. Right. So I really kind of pushed the uh, pushed the idea of free content two or three years later. Eben Pagan coined the term of what I did, which was move the free line. Right. So that was kind of the first big impact move I had on the online market. The other was getting more serious about business. That was another one. Then, um, in addition to helping Agora grow, which most people know of, and then I'm a partner of Jay Abraham's. Uh, was that I also invented, I did, my team and I invented the automated webinar. Um, our software was, that we used in-house was the first software that was given to Mike Filsane, which he then used, created, modified, whatever, uh, to create uh, ever webinar systems and then webinar jam. And so I coached, though, Mike Filsane over a decade ago. I coached Ryan Dice over a decade ago. Russell Brunson, you know, most of the people in the market today uh, in one way or another were somehow impacted by me. And so more so, I'd say, than any other reason, uh, Ingram, was that uh, I they felt I have a relationship with those people. I guess that would be the easiest way to say it. And I am always amazed at how much my reputation precedes me. Um, generally, when I try to get someone on the phone or when I try and talk to someone that's related to anything online, a lot more people than I would ever expect know who I am. And that's generally nobody who's gotten online in the couple, last couple of years, but a lot of people who have been online for a long time. So I'd say that's it, uh, Ingram. Birth name plus married name. So what's the birth name and what's the married name? Because I'm horrible at that stuff. Uh, hey, Rich, have an awesome birthday. Thanks, Bill. Good to see you back, my friend. Um, Aventura. Oh, very cool. Mike Filsane is convinced that Brickle is going to become the next hotspot of internet marketing. He said that people are moving from San Diego and from Austin to Brickle. It's all in who Rich knows or who knows Rich, right? Because... Uh, Charlene from Massachusetts. Nice to see you, Charlene. Uh, how to find 25K to help Army Father so he can see his sick son. That's the question? Well, okay. 
other than doing like a go uh go fund me or something do you have anything therese that could uh that you could use to do that um you know anything at all that you could sell and have the proceeds go that way or do you do do you have a business i don't know like Without knowing anything about you, Therese, I can't answer that question unless you give me some more background, but would be glad to once I know those details. Um, <laughs> answering your question with a question, I sometimes do that. Do I see your question? Did I already pass it? Or did I already answer it? Uh, oh, you're going to love my question today. No, I didn't see it, Mia, if, if you already asked it. Ask it again. Consistent online sales uh, have a have some processes that work behind the scenes automatically for you consistently. Yeah, that's uh, Peter's advice. Hello, Rich. Do you have a rough estimate on how many books you have read in total? No, no idea, no idea whatsoever. And I. Uh, and I've been reading a lot less the last couple of months because my elliptical is not working. And I don't, the, it's the combination of exercise, which keeps my ADD brain somewhat quiet and contained while I'm reading really fast. That really works for me. And I find that just reading really fast is nowhere near as pleasurable. I want to get up and move around. And, uh, there aren't any other machines I can use, at least in our house, that where I can read and exercise at the same time. Uh, so how will SOW Groovy work? Uh, SOW Groove will work where it's basically the same as SOW, just has two extra interviews or one extra interview each month with a Groove user. Um, and people can jump from one to the other. It's, you know, Mike and I have a handshake agreement about that. What's your opinion on spending budgets on branding where no CTA, then we target them with a direct response style? Um, I don't like it. But what I do like is, well, generally what I would say is, is that I think when you're going to colder audiences, what you want to do is you do want to get people to raise their hand that are a part of that audience, right? But I think there are better things to do than branded content. Like you'd be better off taking like some clickbaity thing, right? Some clickbaity article, right? That you are curating that you use as an, like a, an ad that lets you know when someone clicks on it, that they're in your target market. And then from there, start to retarget them or target them. And, um, so that would be the way that I would do it. I definitely like the idea of going after cold traffic differently, but I don't know that I would do it from a branding perspective because then you don't really know, right? Like anything more than that. They clicked on a branded image, which may not have anything to do with your industry. Whereas like for this, for example, I know that if someone sticks around for more than a minute or two, odds are is that they are in my market and then I can retarget those people. So hopefully that helps John. Hi, Therese. <laughs> um, currently, what is your number one way of growing your list organically? No ads. I'd say that the, I'd say that the best thing that we have is the docu series, right? So, I try to create things that have high value so that my affiliates, and I know that you're not asking me that, but I'm going to share this and then I can expand on it. That like, I like to give my affiliates whenever possible, something that they can tell their list about that has like zero, zero hard sell in it so that they don't have to be the heavy to their list. And so like the docu-series, which was advertised at the beginning of this live stream, is 10 free episodes of this live stream I did. And so I find things like that tend to work really well. And I think that anyone who talks to a lot of marketers could put 
could talk about the free 10 episodes and get people to want to check it out. So uh, it was the same with my reports, Evie, that when I wrote the Internet Business Manifesto or any the Attention Age Doctrines, the Maven Manifesto, any of these, my goal was to create something so valuable that other people would tell other people about it. I actually wrote about that in the Attention Age Doctrine too, where I talked about how prospects are no longer just targets, they're your absolute best channel, right? So prospects, it's, not, it's word of mouth marketing, but it's, it's breaking free from the thought that a referral has to come from a customer or client. A referral can come from another prospect, one prospect talking to someone else, just saying that you should check out this great content, right? That content happens to be marketing content for me, but for them, it's just great content. And so people are sharing it with others and that's growing my business, growing my list, et cetera, right? The internet business manifesto in total in, since the 16 years or 15 years ago, oh wow, 2006, 2021. So in June of this year will be the 15 year anniversary of the Internet Business Manifesto. And in those 15 years, it's been downloaded millions of times. So that was not a function of advertising. In fact, when I released the Internet Business Manifesto, I did no advertising for it. It grew virally. And so create something that's worth talking about. Create something that's highly valuable. Create something that when people uh, come into contact with it, they feel it's valuable but at the same time are shifting buying, buying criteria so that it's not that you're just giving valuable content. And that was the problem I had with moving the free line because the thought is, is just give away better stuff for free. And I totally disagree with that. You give great stuff that also advances the sale and it has to advance the sale. And it shouldn't just be advancing the sale based on, oh, this is so good, like th what they're selling must be better. No. The content itself should make the person a better prospect for you. And that's why one of the definitions that I have of marketing, and I have several, and there are millions of definitions of marketing overall, but one of them is teaching prospects how to value your product. And if you look at any of the reports I've ever written, what they were designed to do was teach people how to value my product. But in order for them to value my product, I had to teach them other things. And those things that I taught them would then lead to the insights, what we were talking about earlier, the insights that would then have them see the value of what it is I'm offering. So, you know, I wholeheartedly believe that almost everyone in internet marketing back in 2006 was not interested in business coaching. They didn't see the value in it. And so I wrote the Internet Business Manifesto and one of the goals of it was to help people, right, value business coaching. And in order to do that, I had to show them things that they did not know that was costing them money that was coming from the world of business. And so that's why I think it did so well. But you got to really get into the head of your prospect. What would give them an insight so powerful they'd want to share it with others? Also, thank you for sharing your journey with ADHD. I had my 23-year-old tested after ordering two books you suggested, and guess what? Bingo. This has been a game changer for our family. I know you talk mostly about business, but I wanted to share how you being transparent changed our life. Well, that's great, Mia, and your son is in good company, right? I have ADD, Jay Abraham has ADD, and a good portion of the gurus that I've coached over the years have ADD. So it can be an advantage. I feel like for me, it's an advantage. And uh, it does come with some uh, things that are not so much an advantage, but in all in all, uh, uh, in all in all, I am, I wouldn't trade, I wouldn't trade, you know, there's in the Jewish religion and I'm originally Jewish, right? Um, they have something metaphorically called the problem tree. And would you be willing to give up all the problems that you have and put it on the tree and just pull randomly someone else's. And most people would say no to that. I certainly would say no to that, which means that I'm totally content 
with the pros and cons that I've been dealt with in life. And based on where I'm sitting, I think I would be kind of an asshole if I thought otherwise. I've been very blessed. Uh, how do I make it, Peter? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, the tree of life is good for creative thinking. Oh, that's funny. I don't know if that was what, hmm, that's just coincidental, I guess. Um, why can't he contact the Red Cross? I think you're being scammed. Uh, ah, okay, that's to Therese, I guess. This is my best friend, so I am not. Uh, hey, Rich. Hey, Facebook user. Uh, that's actually really helpful, Rich. Thank you. Uh, what software do you use to stream to different pages? That is StreamYard. I just got LinkedIn Live. Oh, well, congratulations, Evie. That is not easy to do right now, and I don't know if I'm going to get approved. I applied once before when I did the 26-hour or 24-hour live stream, this one, and uh, they said no. But I'm not that active on LinkedIn, so I get it. I just wish that they would – hopefully now they see I do live streams twice a week like I would be a good person to actually have it. Uh, I've been running the exact same event model. Okay, yeah, I saw this and I thought I answered you. So thank you. I'm currently running the event every season. I'm looking for, I got a nice audience. I'm open for some suggestions. Yeah, I thought I answered this already, Mia. Um, what I said was watch the Simone interview this month in Steal Our Winners. He talks about putting a masterclass in between the challenges because it's so much work for him and his team to do the challenges, but they want something else in between, just like what you're talking about. So Simone has already figured this out and that's great because Simone had a completely offline business that then he had to totally retool when Corona happened to doing challenges and master classes because he used to do three day live events and that's what he would use to um, get people into his back ends. Have I tried restream, but you prefer... No, I have not tried Restream. I could try Restream, but now I'm using two services, right? I'm using then Ecamm into Restream. And why would I do that when I could just use StreamYard to be in all of them? Although today I kind of messed up because I posted the wrong slide with the right info. So I had to go back and then do another one. And hopefully it didn't confuse anyone. Um, all right. So. Can you do a training on StreamYard? How do you stream to multiple platforms? It's really easy in StreamYard. You don't really need, I don't need to show you anything. When you turn on StreamYard, it asks you where you want to stream to. So it's really straightforward. There is really nothing for me to share. I, no one taught me, and I'm not that gifted when it comes to technology, uh, as shocking as that might be to some people. Like, you know, Todd Brown still talks about, like, I don't know how to send an email from Infusionsoft. I've been in an email, I've owned, I've, been paying Infusionsoft since 2005. So it's been, you know, what, 16 years? And I don't know how to send an email from a program that I've been paying for for 16 years, but I don't want to know because it's not my highest and best use. And so always better to have other people know those things. But this is so simple that as soon as I logged in, I saw exactly how to do it. Hi, Rich. How do you tell all those marketers to Q&A with you, the coalition thing? How could I copycat that in the fitness niche? I know some heavyweights in the health and fitness industry. Um, well, so what would be, you got to come up with a rationale, right, as to why. So for me, I came up with the rationale. One, I was coming back into the space, right, because I had been absent for quite a while. The other reason, though, was what I saw big tech doing, which they're continuing to do. Got to remember, like I called out big tech before all this crap was happening with the elections, with prior to the elections, after the elections, people getting banned, people getting shadow banned, all these kinds of things. Um, in addition to that, most people are not aware that now more than 51 percent of the searches in Google, do not leave Google's pages, which means that the old like handshake deal about what a search engine was, where they can come and scrape everyone's content, is now like unfair because they're taking every, Google doesn't have any content. The reason people go to Google to search is to see what's out there, to find an answer to a problem, what have you. Every single answer that Google shares was somebody else's. And so now they only share that traffic with less than 
which means that the 51% that stay within the Google ecosystem, they, they were drawn there by other people's content that they've scraped and now use in their search engine. And I have a problem with that. And I think every online person that creates content should have a problem with that because the original deal of a search engine was you were gonna scrape our content, but then send that traffic to us. Not that you were gonna scrape our content and then keep half the visitors, just like with Facebook. When Facebook first started, uh, they, they incentivized every company to put in their advertisements, come follow us on Facebook. Now, why did they do that? Because Facebook told uh, all these advertisers, look, you get them to follow you in Facebook and then they're going to see all your messages. So you can then have, it's like you're for free, right? And so all the companies in the world said, like us on Facebook. And then what happened when everyone joined Facebook? Then Facebook said, you know what? We're going to change the rules now. People who follow you are not going to see you. Thanks for sending all your people to us. But now if you want to talk to them, you're going to have to pay us. Once again, completely unfair, right? Completely taking advantage of every business. And so I, that was the theme of the coalition to save internet business. These big companies are not our friends. They use us, they take advantage of us, and then they kick us out of the platform and we have no voice. And I have a problem with all of that, right? Even though I've been paid to teach to Google and Yahoo, not, um, not Facebook, but uh, I have a problem with it, a big problem. And I think most people should, right? So that was the overlying idea of Rich is back, because this is a big issue and I want to bring other guests in here so that we can all talk about it, right? So what is it that's going on? What's the bigger issue in the fitness community that would resonate with a large group of people that you could then bring people together? Now, I will tell you that it's probably about a hundred times easier to do this virtually, right? A virtual like event. And there have been a gazillion of those over the last year. It takes a lot more uh, heft. It takes a lot bigger reputation. It takes a lot of money um, to bring everybody to one location. And so unless that is integral, um, I wouldn't do that. For me, it was integral because I compete with everyone else in the market. And so everyone else is doing virtual stuff. I want to be clear that I'm not at the same level as everyone else. I play at a different level. And because of that, I can back that up by doing like that event that I did last year, just like back in 2012 and profit hacks, the very first video didn't like where I was the star of that video. Um, I, we had no testimonials, no nothing. And I just had a button that was on the page that searched my name in quotes in Google. And at that time there was like 150,000 pages about me. I think now there's like 40,000 uh, cause I was inactive and all that stuff. But that was my proof. Like if you wanna know more about all the people I've helped, all the businesses I've grown, the impact I've made, then on the right is a button that will search Google under my name. And there's a hundred plus thousand pages there. Scroll through as many as you want and see what people have said. Very few people could say that, very people could do that. They wouldn't have the reputation and the chops. So for all those reasons, that's why I did what I did. Like I said, right, if you don't need to do that, I wouldn't because it complicates the affair incredibly. I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do it this year. We're talking about doing it right now sometime in June or July. But uh, that's our plan. And we'll do it again live because we're one of the few people that can. And so might as well take advantage of that and use it to help us um, with that. See, I'm losing, like, let's see. All right. Uh, hey, Miyako, happy birthday from Japan. Wow, it seems like we have a lot of Japanese people today. Crazy. Um, or a lot of people in Japan. Let me rephrase. Um, I think Clubhouse is probably the best way to get a following right now if that's important to your business. I think that... Um, it is, I know a lot of people who are already making a lot of money on in, on Clubhouse. They're moving people to like uh, send me a message in Instagram. And then that message 
the messaging in Instagram is tied to Facebook. And so then their chat functionality takes over and then moves people into either a call or to a product or whatever. So even when I reach out to other people that I've shared the stage with in Clubhouse and, they, and I then go in to DM them in Instagram, uh, their, their messenger bot starts answering me and then they're jumping in on top of it saying, disregard that, Rich. That's for, you know, most people, let's move this over here, right? So that's what's going on. Uh, you make awesome charts. Can you provide some type of overview of these products for your live stream? Are you talking about like the internet business manifesto chart and those things, or are you talking about something else? So just let me know, Kathy. Oh, wow. All right. So um, I have, oh, the frozen pipes. Get it. All right, guys. I really apologize, but I do have to jet. Like I said, I was late the last time. I Wait, let me just make sure because I see a couple things on my calendar and I want to make sure that. Um, all right. This says 730. Uh, yes, I'm going. All right, so now it looks like this can go. So I'm going to delete that. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to see if I can maximize um, my time here with you guys. I think, uh, let's see, what's on here? No, there's nothing there. All right, so I'm going to delete that. Um all right, let me wrap up though, but let me see if I can answer a few more questions before I say goodbye to you guys. Um, wow, I really need to get crisp. It's with a K, K R I S P dot A I. Uh, I don't have an affiliate link for it, John. Just go ahead and buy it. Uh, what are these lights from Amazon? How do you buy them on Amazon? I watched Mike Filsane demo. Um, it's. If you are here on Tuesday, Kathy, I will post a link to in the comments to the Amazon, um, to the Amazon, you know, to the product on Amazon. They're like the ones over there, the green suck. And those were more expensive. Um, I thought if I bought a more expensive pair after the first pair, it would be even better, but they were worse. But the pair down there is 70 bucks for two LED multicolored lights with a remote control. So I think if you look for that and you look for a remote control that looks like this, you'll see, um, because the other ones, the ones in the back are only powered by my phone, which actually I don't like. I like this better. And this is much more powerful than the lights that I bought that are the green ones. So, um, if you can't find it, Kathy, though, ask me on Tuesday and I will take the time to send you the link. Um, Shakir, my pleasure. Uh, it will be. Thank you, Christine. Helping clients package their knowledge into a high ticket offer. Yeah, then for sure, a masterclass seems like that's what you should do. Um, cool. Yeah, so definitely watch the Simone one. Ask you a question. Read Keeping a Journal on YouTube. Would love to hear your thoughts on creative thinking and strategic personal development. Um, you know what? I think that's a great topic to do next week, personal development and the entrepreneur. So that is, I'm going to write that down as a note to myself. I, unless a better idea occurs to me, that's what we're going to do. Uh, personal development for entrepreneurs. Um, so that's what we'll do. Cool. Uh, planet in the San Diego part of the planet. I got the I got your phone number from somebody from Kayvon, but you could have texted. You have my contact information, Doctor Vogelman. So yeah, all right. So it looks like I got to the end. I probably jumped over a whole bunch of. Um, I probably jumped over a bunch of people. Like I see that I didn't answer uh, Teresa. So what? do they do with them? Well, they take them to an answer box, which is your content. They take them to uh, YouTube, which is their property. Um, they just read about it and uh, then you'll see what they do. But it, this is not unknown knowledge. Uh, it actually was in the Wall Street Journal back in 
I think January of last year, but could have been even sooner. And uh, anyway, uh, that's it, guys. So I'm going to jump because I don't want to be rude. And Kim Walsh Phillips always includes me in great stuff like this. And I don't want to be an asshole. So uh, thanks, guys, for being here. I think this was one of the most heavily attended live streams in a while. Uh, maybe not on any one platform, but on all the platforms. And so just thank you for that. And I really appreciate it. I know that you guys could do a ton of things with your time. You chose to be here with me. And for that, I truly appreciate. So uh, speak to everyone next Tuesday. I will be a year older. I will be a year wiser, hopefully. And uh, we will talk about personal development for entrepreneurs, because why not? So until then, to higher profits beyond, Sheffrin out.